everyone welcome back so let us continue our discussion we are in uh, week 8 and this is our third lecture so hope by now you have gone through the derivations and then uh, you are also familiar with uh, the um, logic that we have developed to model the uh, MDOF system right so what we will do today we will solve uh, some example and before that let us quickly review what we have um, derived in our previous two lectures. So, uh, we consider a two-dof system, but uh, the logic is same for um, structures with more degrees of freedom. So, this is the first mass m1 connected to spring and dashpot having identified as k1 c1 and this is x1 and then we have second mass and it is connected with mass m1 through this spring and dashpot k2 c2 right and for the time being we are considering um, free vibration so the equation of motion in this case is m1 0 0 m2 that is the mass matrix times the degrees of freedom. So, x1 double dot x2 double dot plus c1 plus c2 minus c2 minus c2 c2. and there will be x1 dot x2 dot plus k1 plus k2 minus k2 minus k2 k2 and it will be multiplied by x1 x2 on the right hand side we have 0 because this is the homogeneous part and then we have the initial conditions. The initial conditions in this case is defined as so I C is x 0 is given by x naught and x dot at time t 0 is x dot naught. So, symbolically this equation we write m x double dot plus c x dot plus k x is equal to 0 and this is a coupled equation we have also discussed that if we introduce a cup I mean transformation x equal to phi z to decouple the system then what we have x dot is equal to phi z dot and x double dot will be phi z double dot and the moment you do that we derive the expression phi transpose m phi z double dot plus phi transpose c phi z dot plus phi transpose k phi z is equal to 0. Now, due to orthogonality, 
this will be diagonal matrix. So, we call it M D and phi transpose C phi it is not always diagonal except we have some assumption. So, what we do C equal to alpha times m plus beta times k, where this alpha and beta they are proportionality constants. So, what we assume that this C matrix is proportional to mass matrix and stiffness matrix. Okay. Under this assumption again we can show that obviously phi transpose C phi is equal to alpha times phi transpose m phi which is a diagonal plus beta times phi transpose k phi. So, this is effectively alpha times m d plus beta times k d. Obviously, then this matrix is diagonal. So, we write it C d z dot plus k d z is equal to 0. Now, if you recall single degree of freedom system for uh, free vibration obviously our equation was m x double dot plus c x dot plus k x is equal to 0. Then what we do? We actually divide both side by mass that means we normalize it. So, we have x double dot plus twice eta n omega n um, x dot plus omega n square x equal to 0. So, this is uh, known to us. We have done this type of mass normalization multiple times. Now, in this case also if you do a mass normalization obviously, the first coefficient will be i then z double dot plus second coefficient for this damping force will be twice eta n omega n. This will be a diagonal matrix then z dot plus omega n square diagonal matrix times z is equal to 0. So, these are all independent equations and if I write z k of t, we can write the response. What will be the response? Exponential exp e to the power minus eta n omega n t and then I write oh, it will be eta k because that is the kth mode we are talking about. Then this will be a k cos omega d k t plus let me make some space here. plus b k sin omega d k times t. So, a k and b k are constants, they are obtained from I c initial conditions in modal coordinate. This is important because the new equation is in modal coordinate, but that is also not a difficult task because we know that x is equal to phi z. So, x naught at time t 0 will be phi times z naught. So, from there we can find out 
what is the initial displacement in the model coordinate. Similarly, x naught dot will be equal to phi z naught dot. So, again from this equation we can find out what is the initial velocity in the model coordinate. We will solve some example in a minute, but before that let us again focus our attention on this damping matrix, right? because we have to find out alpha and beta. Now, for that again uh, if you look at this final equation, so we have um, kth damping in this equation. So, if we consider the final expression, so here and kth damping or we call it nth damping then um, twice eta n omega n will be equal to alpha times because this is mass normalized. So, we will have 1 here 1 because mass normalized plus beta times the moment we mass normalize we will have omega n square here. Therefore, what we have eta n is equal to alpha by twice omega n plus beta omega n by 2. Okay. So, <coughs> this is an important derivation. What you can conclude that every model damping is related to this through this equation. Now, how many unknowns we have? We have two unknowns alpha and beta. Now, how many equations we can develop here? N equations. Okay. Now, of course, we can also consider N equations and then find out alpha and beta there is some way out, but normally what is done is uh, because we have two unknowns, two unknowns, then we develop two equations. Which equations? The first two modes are normally mostly active. In this case, we have two modes, so we have no chance, but if we have more than two degrees of freedom, then what we do? We consider first mode and second mode. Now, if I consider first mode, obviously, first equation will be alpha by 2 omega 1 plus beta omega 1 by 2 that is the first equation and then second mode if you consider then alpha by twice omega 2 plus beta omega 2 by 2. And then once we define these two equations, what we define? We fix the modal damping normally for a structure and then we find out. So, evaluate alpha and beta. Okay. So, again I repeat, we consider first two modes. We have to consider at least two modes because we have uh, two unknowns in this expression. So, we consider normally first two modes because those two modes are mostly active in majority of the structure, but there are examples where uh, we have other modes are also excited. So, it is up to the designer which modes you consider to evaluate alpha and beta. So, you can select two different modes and then uh, based on that you can calculate what is alpha and beta. Now, you can consider first two modes and find out a closed form expression for alpha and beta which is normally available in the textbook, but uh, I do not derive. We have to solve these two equations 1 and 2 and find out the closed form solution for this alpha and beta. This I leave as a home task for you. Okay. It is very simple. We just solve this linear equations. What you know? Eta 1, eta 2, omega 1, omega 2 and then you can easily solve um, alpha and beta. So, 
that is how we actually quantify damping in a dynamical system. Um, but there are other ways of course, uh, as I uh, told at the very beginning that damping matrix uh, it is not always diagonal. There is no uh, compulsion that uh, this damping matrix has to be diagonal. If it is diagonal then we can decouple the system, if it is not we cannot then there will be other treatment of this coupled equation. For example, if you recall we discussed Wilson theta and Imog beta those type of algorithm we can easily apply. Uh, they do not demand any kind of um, diagonalization, so we can consider any damping mass or stiffness matrix. But for the time being if we consider first two modes which are mostly active in structural system and then define the critical damping ratio in the first two modes and then we can easily find out alpha and beta. The advantage of doing that is this equation because we can completely decouple the system and as we progress you will see we can easily find out the solution. So, solution is here that is in the model coordinate and finally, once we solve all z k then we know z. So, we can go to this equation x equal to phi z and then we can find out the solution in the generalized coordinate. What is the generalized coordinate? That is x here. So, this is the generalized coordinate, but we convert the system into modal coordinate just because that helps us to reduce the uh, coupled equation of motion. Now, let us solve uh, one example using MATLAB and then we will see how we can evaluate. So, what we will do? We will consider this uh, two dot system. In fact, uh, we solved earlier, today we will uh, do it in MATLAB. So, mass m 1 is equal to 10 kg, m 2 is equal to 25 kg, k 1 is equal to 100 Newton per meter and k 2 is equal to 150 Newton per meter. Okay. So, with that uh, let us um, develop the equation of motion. So, equation of motion will be 10, 0, 0, 25, x 1 double dot, x 2 double dot. plus uh, we will evaluate C matrix. So, I just write it C 1 plus C 2 minus C 2 minus C 2 C 2, then it will be multiplied by x 1 dot x 2 dot and we have also defined the stiffness. So, it will be 100 plus 150. So, this is 250 minus 150 minus 150 plus 150 times x 1 x 2 is equal to 0 0. Okay, so, what we will do? We will first solve natural frequencies that we have already done. Just we will do it, we will check and cross verify in MATLAB. Then uh, we will see phi matrix. Okay. Then we will check phi transpose m phi whether it is truly diagonal or not. Then similarly phi transpose k phi that also should be diagonal. We will cross verify. Then uh, what we will do? We have to find out alpha and beta. Okay. And once we find out alpha and beta, then we will find out C matrix okay. and then we will check phi transpose C phi whether it is diagonalized or not. So, these are the tasks we will do one by one. Okay. So, let us first define the system. And then uh, first m 1 
is equal to 10, m 2 is equal to 25, then we have k 1 is equal to 100, k 2 is equal to 150. Then we define mass matrix which is um, we can write it is already a diagonal matrix. So, we can define the matrix this way and then uh, we have to define stiffness for that k 1 plus k 2 minus k 2 the next line minus k 2 k 2. So, that is the stiffness matrix. Then what we do we solve the eigenvalue problem and for that we call this E i g in MATLAB. Here I uh, would like to tell you one thing that uh, for large structures when we find out the natural frequency through modal solution, uh, we do not use this type of eigen solver. There are other numerical eigen solvers when we will have uh, ANSYS tutorial in the last module, we will update you about that. So, there are different algorithms for finding out the um, eigen values of large structures and you will see um, those details there. Now, next is we have to find out what is omega n. So, for that uh, we take the square root of the diagonal of this matrix D. So, this is D So, now we have natural frequency. So, let us call it phi, phi equal to v and then um, we have to check um, phi transpose m phi and then phi transpose k phi. So, that is the first task. So, let us do that. So, we call it m d o f test sorry. Now, it is done. So, so we run that and uh, what we get is again this is our mass matrix m and then we have stiffness matrix, then we do the eigen analysis, we have the eigen vectors, eigen values which is diagonal and then natural frequency which is the square root of these two uh, entries in diagonal and then finally, we have um, phi transpose m phi and phi transpose k phi. So, now you can see that mass matrix and uh, stiffness matrix they are diagonal because all of diagonal terms are 0. Not only that in this eigen solver mass matrix is actually normalized you see. So, effectively uh, when you diagonalize uh, stiffness matrix it will be omega n square and that you can cross verify you see this d here this is just uh, the same matrix that you get omega n square. So, that also cross verifies our claim that once we mass normalize the stiffness matrix will be omega n square. So, first part of the problem is done, our next task is to solve the um, mass and stiffness proportionality constant right and for that again uh, let me just quickly write down the expression and then uh, we will solve it. So, what we have is eta n is equal to alpha divided by twice omega n plus beta omega n 
divided by 2. So, for 2 modes, we have here 2 modes only. So, we use this expression and then we will develop the simultaneous equation. So, what we have here is uh, say the actually we have to write this equation into a matrix times alpha and beta and then eta 1, eta 2. So, this will be the format. What is this A matrix? You can easily tell that this is 1 by twice omega 1 plus, sorry, then omega 1 by 2, then 1 by 2 omega 2, omega 2 by 2. So, that is the matrix we have to define and then we will solve it. Okay, so, what we do? We define this A matrix and that is 1 divided by 2 star omega n 1, then omega n 1 divided by 2. <laughs> then next row, we have 1 divided by 2 star omega n 2 and the last element will be omega n 2 divided by 2. Then eta n will be equal to, we have to define. So, eta 1 we call it say 2 percent that is the first critical damping ratio in the mode 1. So, the next one is the second one. Let us also keep it same. Then what we will do? We will change and see how they will vary. So, now here we have eta 1, eta 2 and then finally, we have to find out this alpha and beta. So, let me call it A L is equal to inverse of A star eta n. So, let us run it. Fine, job is done. So, we define this A matrix and then eta n we have 2 percent damping in both the modes and we have alpha 1 that is 0 0.0454 and alpha 2 or sorry al alpha and beta. So, alpha is 0 0.0454 and beta is 0 0.0059. Now, the question is we want to cross verify whether it diagonalize or not. That we will see in a minute. So, C matrix will now be uh, A L 1 star M plus a L 2 that is beta star k. Okay. So, that is the C matrix and then we have to check phi transpose um, C phi. So, let us do that. So, you can see now we have C matrix which is there on your screen. The first element is 1.9210 that is the summation of C 1 and C 2 and then next one is minus um, 0 0.8800 that is minus C 2 uh, similarly the last term is uh, something different. So, this is basically the C matrix and the moment we cast the C matrix in this way we have actually the diagonal matrix. Now, that is what we have to actually keep in mind while constructing C matrix and uh, the moment we do that it is now diagonalized. So, we can decouple the equation of motion. Now, if I change it say one is 2 percent, another is say 5 percent, then um, we can easily estimate what will be the C matrix and what will be the respective alpha and beta. So, that is how we actually solve 
the system and the moment we have this um, alpha and beta then we can find out the solution. So, that clearly shows you how we can um, use the concept of uh, modal decoupling of uh, the already coupled equation of motion in the original space. So, that is the theory and then we have also checked all uh, the key points that we have already discussed in detail step by step and the takeaway point is we now can adopt this equation z k and to solve the system we can use this modal decoupling and transform the equations from the original space to the modal space and then solve it there and bring it back to the original space. We will do that also when we will go to the next module. So, with that let us close here. We will continue our discussion on MDOF system, but in the next module we will have forced vibration. Thank you very much. Thank you.